السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا محمد هلو عمين وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته كيراك خويا لاباس نديرو حلقة بالعربية نديروه بالعربية خير علاش لا علاش لا I wonder how many um, I wonder how many North Africans we have Ah I think we have a review on Apple Apple Podcasts one of the Jazari said I forgot something like I'll give you the truth 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 Mind Heist Who said it's Mind Heist in Arabic? Mind heist. Uh, wait, wait. سرقة uh, العقل. سرقة. Oh yeah. Very yes. good. سرقة العقل. It sounds good in Arabic as well. صح? Oh mate, maybe I should do that as a little subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to get the Arabic listeners. All right. Well, ninety percent of our listeners have just stopped listening now, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's good, man? Uh, what's good in the hood? Well, let's have a look. Mind Heist podcast. We're back with another episode. Um, yeah, uh, episode fifty uh, forty-seven. Forty-seven. Seven hundred Yes. Oh, I'm just looking there at our um, social medias. Just having a little blitz through. Wow, look okay. at that. We've got clips now. We've got. Mm. We've got funky titles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I think last episode was really good, but it was also. A uh, heavy, dense, kind of serious kind of one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good to mix up the different type of things, bro. Yes, this is what I wanted to definitely share before I forget at the beginning. Uh, yeah, like I told you, kind of in summary yesterday, uh, I was at Salat al Juma in an ISOC kind of prayer room, oh, yeah. and uh, a couple of a couple of guys came up to me and they said, "Oh, I know you from the podcast and stuff." So I guess they know what I look like from my videos as well. But um, they're like, yeah, <clears throat> uh, one brother, Muhammad from Birmingham, he's like, yeah, I really like the podcast. Um, and I just asked him for some feedback. He said, you know, just be consistent and just keep it going. Um, it was really good talking to him. He asked me a lot of questions about general stuff. So that was really good. Yeah, really good, man, just to see it in real life. Uh, and like I told you, I feel like if I was in the UK and I was going to like different ice arcs or different events or whatever where people go um we probably would meet more people who listen to to our podcast you know um and then there was another brother Mahmoud he came to me uh Yemeni brother I think he's from uh Birmingham I think he's from Birmingham as well he said uh yeah he said just keep up he said he wanted like more um business kind of stuff content but uh I don't know if if we could really provide that kind of all the time but yeah it's good to know that he's interested in that mm. um what else did he say he said yeah just keep it consistent he said uh, i didn't understand this fully uh, uh, but he said like um what i like about mind heist is it's not just your opinions and i was thinking actually that's all it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think what he meant is because afterwards he said it's, it's very practical it's like you try and make it real life and I think that's what he meant. It's not theories. Like, it's not just these theories. It's like, if we say, you should, I don't know, oh, yeah, read Quran every day. Oh, do this. You should treat your family like this. Like, we, we try and apply it to a real person's schedule or something like that. Yeah. So maybe that's what he meant. Anyway, Jazakumullah khairan. It was very good to hear from them. And it's uh, like uh, we read in the in the review as well. It's good to get the reviews and... Uh, oh yeah, we got that email as well coming in, didn't we? <laughs> oh, have you read that one already? Yeah. No, no, the email um, from Rashid. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Very simple. Uh, what was it? Mind heist better than <laughs> freshly grounded. <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> we have a, another email here from um, a sister. It says, um, "Salam, brothers. My son told me about your podcast. Alhamdulillah." I'm listening mm. to the War on Family episode and couldn't agree more with what you said. Uh, and they say that I have a podcast and website for Muslim mothers. I've added your podcast to my blog post because I would really like other parents to find you. May Allah reward you both for your good deeds and intentions. Inshallah, Amen. please remember me and your family in your du'as. Um, 
and then they go on to say that their next podcast is uh, going to be on different aspects of feminism, young Muslim women, uh, things like that. And their the name of their website is Farhat Amin. So F A R H A T A M I N dot com. Great, great, very nice, man. Very nice. Um, actually, I want to I want to give a kind of shout out as well. I listened to. The podcast, I mean, it's, I think it's relatively new, or there's just not many episodes on it, but yeah, I think it's called uh, the Ibn Abi Omar uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, this brother, Omar Uthman, he's from uh, the US, I think, Texas. And, you know, I've seen him, he's been involved with like uh, uh, Qalam Institute, uh, you know, Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda and stuff. And um, uh, I believe he's, he's, uh, his speciality is like leadership, like obviously in a corporate kind of scenario, mm. yeah. And uh, he's got certifications from like John Maxwell and stuff like that. But anyway, I, 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 uh, I found his podcast, I came across it, and I listened to one episode where he was talking about s- the scarcity mindset. But what I loved, and I emailed him about this to, to give him the feedback, um, what I loved is that it was completely approaching it from a, an Islamic paradigm you know so i know there's a lot of like uh, self-help books that might talk about uh you know uh, scarcity mindset but he was like he's like he didn't even seem to be taking that into account when he was he was you know doing this podcast he's purely taking from muslim sources islamic sources and some of the islamic sources seem to go against what you might read from those uh you know non-religious non-islamic uh kind of books that, that explore yeah. this topic so i really enjoyed that man like just purely taking lessons from islamic sources because sometimes you know i read these books self-help books and stuff and i really enjoy it uh, it really makes sense um and i might even be applying some of those things and then one two three years later i learned something you know from from the quran from the sunnah whatever and uh i realized hmm like i just start questioning like is that way of thinking the islamic way of thinking and yeah. you know it, I, I really I, I like to have that kind of more pure way of thinking where it's like completely based on that at least where applicable you know obviously uh, we're not going to learn about i don't know how to apply the i don't know scientific method from the quran and sunnah per se but uh we can learn about stuff like leadership like you know mindset and stuff like that from how the Prophet ﷺ thought and how the Sahaba thought and stuff, you know. On that note, yeah, quite quite nice segue there. We had another message from Curious Cat. It said, "Salam alaikum, brothers. I saw a tweet on Freshly Grounded recently. Just wondering if you guys listen to slash are aware of any other Islamic podcast? Mm. Do any of the UK <coughs> duad have podcasts? Okay, good. So we can share. Do you have? Uh, do you listen me, to a lot of podcasts bro you know I've, i am subscribed to a lot and i yeah. used to i used to listen to a lot mm. um now i've realized that i don't really have much time like mm. my only time i can listen is when i drive to and from work yeah um which is not that long it's not a long mm. journey anymore okay but generally yes so let's have a look at my list of what i do have generally let's go Islamic. back to back you do one i do one God, I actually haven't got a lot. I've just realised I've got really, I've got the most popular ones, but that's about it. Um, okay. Uh, obviously, I've got freshly grounded. Mm. Do you um, listen to every episode? I used to, mm. and now I find myself listening to most. <laughs> Sometimes oh, okay. I miss a couple. Um, mm. so generally, all of them I miss a couple. Um, yeah. But yeah, generally, I listen mm. to most. All right. Okay. Um, I'm also subscribed, but I don't, I, I only listen selectively, like very selectively, because obviously, mashallah, he's very, uh, he's very consistent. So it's like every single week there's an episode mm-hmm. and then I just kind of pick uh, based on the guest, I suppose. So I'm just looking and I listen to your one. I listen to Tim Humble. Um, I listen to Super Saf, you know, like in the last, say, three months, I probably listened to three, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, because a lot of these people I don't know them, and it's, so it's like I need something to pull me in and like, you know, like sh- tell me what what's it going to be about kind of thing. Of course, yeah, yeah, and that's actually what one one of the brothers, uh, Muhammad, that, that gave me feedback um, on Friday. He said uh, he I asked him because I, I'm quite wary of 
our podcast or any given podcast having this empty space where it's like 10 minutes where you're just kind of talking about nothing much really yeah and i said you know do you find that in our podcast and he said a little bit but it's really not that much so alhamdulillah i was glad to hear that yeah. um but sometimes i'm freshly grounded i think because the structure is like there's no given topic that he wants to cover it's just like whatever comes up uh you can easily have these empty spaces where it's like right. nothing much that's being said you know yeah so that's freshly grounded um so now i'll come with the ilm feed oh, ilm yeah. feed is really good um it has structure it has good questions being asked to the guests and there's a good mixture of like famous and then non let you know less famous people so i really enjoy that i would say i listen to probably 50 percent of those episodes what about you you listen to those uh yeah occasionally if it's um I'm not subscribed to them on my podcast app, but I do uh, put them on on the YouTube YouTube scene. Mm. Um, occasionally, I haven't really popped it on too much. Mm. Uh, I've mm. only think I've listened to theirs when there's a somebody that I know or someone I'm interested in listening. Yeah, to. yeah. If yeah. it's someone I don't recognise, I haven't really delved in. Mm. But this isn't this isn't you know we're not saying this because we're not saying they're good. We're saying this because our schedule just doesn't allow it. But there's a there's many people that obviously you know listen to every single episode of all of these yeah and, yeah, yeah and i support that yeah but, um, for me bro i'm kind of i think a lot of people listen to it for entertainment but i'm yeah. kind of like i'm more on the vibe of like let me learn from this person for a specific purpose exactly. kind of thing yeah. Yeah. yeah so um so with the end but the thing with the end feed one is that the titles will give you a flavor of what the episode is about so even right. if i don't know the person um, I might want to listen to episode anyway because I might be interested in that topic, you know. What else? Uh, have you got any more? Bro, I got loads. So if you don't have any, I'll go. I've got some. <laughs> I've got some. I've got. Okay. Um, I've got Iira's podcast, <clears throat> Rerooted. Yes, yes. I really enjoy that one. Yes. Um, I'm, all, I'm, you know, I'm close friends mm. with Musa anyway. Musa Adnan, who's the host, mm. um, and. He's grown a lot since I've known him. Mm. Like he's really developed and matured as an individual, and you see that even when you, when, you know, when I sit with him and and we discuss things, it's it's crazy because I I've known him since he was sixteen, I think. Right. Um, so seeing his growth and development has been really interesting. Mm. But um, as a host, I think he's a really good host. Um, I think he really uh, he asks good questions and delves deeply into whoever the guest is that he's got on. So. Mm. I think it tends to be a lot less about him because he could easily just go on about himself or you know i mean delve into his own sort of anecdotes but he really hones in on the questions and mm. asks the right questions that everyone wants to hear so yeah rerooted is a really really good one does musa listen to our podcast at all oh i don't know i haven't asked him okay. I, I, I i refrain from asking anyone i know if they listen to my advice <laughs> you gotta put the, uh, make them awkward or make them yeah, feel awkward. i don't want to put them on the spot um <clears throat> I don't think many people that I know closely do. Uh, mm. Some do. I don't know. A lot. Does, you, oh, does actually, your wife listen to it? Yeah, she does. She does. Um, mm. I think. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> I don't want to put her on the spot either. No, there are some brothers <laughs> I'm close to that listen to it quite intently, and I forget that they do. Um, mm. But yeah, alhamdulillah. I really appreciate that my my wife does actually. My wife listens to every episode, so that's. That's nice to know. Biggest we, fan, isn't it? Got at Biggest least fan. one download coming. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I'll be uh, honest. It's good because <clears throat> it's good that we're not sort of uh, super attached <clears throat> to it and our egos aren't getting in the way because that way we're not, we don't get worked up and we can keep it natural and not have to worry about what people want to hear as opposed to what naturally mm. sort of comes to us. Otherwise, it'd be really orchestrated and really artificial. Yes, yes. Yes, you know, if if Musa is listening, I want to give him some feedback because I kind of disagree with your thing on here. I, obviously, really? he's got great guests. He he does ask some good questions, but I think he talks way too much. Really? Like, yeah, like he should sometimes because, um, you know, he did an interview with uh, my partner, Muhammad Arshad, yeah? Okay. And um, I was, because uh, I was doing uh, the content for, for our business. So I was taking that, that interview and I was clipping it up, yeah? And I'll, obviously, I'm trying to just get the clips where Muhammad's talking because we're trying to push out what his message is all about, right? And there was some, sometimes, bro, there's 10 minute parts of the interview where it's just Musa talking. Oh, no. <laughs> so I think well, he might be aware of that. Um, so maybe yeah. he's improving. 
but that's just what I found. But overall, it's really good. Uh, the last one I listened to was uh, the one that, what's his name, Muhammad Hijab hosted with uh, Firas al Oh, okay. Uh, the UFC one. So that that was really good. I mean, I'm not really into UFC, but um, it was interesting. They talked about health. They talked about many things. It was good. Oh, yeah, I didn't watch that one. Um, what else we got? I've got <sighs> Strong Believers podcast. That one's quite um, quite new. It's only on episode seven. Your but boy. It was an episode that, huh? Your boy. Yeah, my boy, Noor. <laughs> uh, I was on that one, wasn't I? I can't remember what episode I was on. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, the, episode five. Uh, five, yeah. So there's yeah, only there seven episodes. There's seven episodes. The oh, they just they just uploaded with Faisal. Okay, exactly. Yeah, seven, the la- the latest episode was with Faisal Chowdhury. Mm. Um, once again, Noor Noor is, Noor is the host of that podcast. He's a beautiful oh. brother. Um, honestly, Allahi Barik, just very an absolute pleasure to sit with and be with. Um, I always uh, I always see a bit of a what's the word like someone I'd want to be like when I see him he doesn't mm. you never hear him laughing out loud he's always got a big smile on his face so mm. it's really nice That's to sit with him and, and he's genuinely very intrigued in his guests and gen, you know genuinely wants to to speak to them and stuff mm. um, as opposed that. to just putting out content mm. uh, yeah. but yeah next one after that have I got any more Muslim <clears throat> ones after that it's just various sort of um I wouldn't say they're official podcasts. I think they're just podcast uploads that are from lectures and stuff. So I've got like okay. the Joe Bradford podcast. Uh, Ustad Joe Bradford from America. I think he's from Texas. Graduate. Of oh, the he's got. University. Oh, that, that's just his lectures, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says Joe he's Bradford sick, yeah. podcast, but I think it just sort of pushes all his lectures on there. Um, right. Okay. Hadith Disciple as well. <laughs> I was su- subscribed to their podcast page, but they haven't uploaded since April. Bro, that was that was the one for me. You know, I used to really? li- play that so much. Like, every, c- because you know, he does very long Q and A's, and then he does yeah. his uh, lectures, and uh, I love that man. And then I don't know why they stopped uploading. I mean, I might might have to might have to withdraw the Patreon <laughs> subscription. <laughs> I mean, essentially, <laughs> essentially, a lot of the listening I do is YouTube. So I will put YouTube on, and this is why I've got such a ridiculous bill for my phone because oh, okay. I pay for a lot of data, yeah, just so I can stream YouTube videos in the background. Okay. Um, so yeah, gen- genuinely, generally speaking, I'm always sort of streaming either Quran from YouTube or lectures from YouTube, um, mm. and then I think that's why with podcasts, um, although although I've always listened to podcasts since I was you know younger, I always um, listen to lectures or lecture series like mostly depending mm. on what mood i am so if i'm in a mood that i want to benefit so for example in the mornings when i'm driving mm. to work i'm listening to a lecture series okay um i feel like that motivates me more to you know take the right steps during the day to be aware of a lost pound during okay. the day you know i like I mean? that yeah very good honestly I, I i you know it's about a 30 minute drive maybe a bit longer to work mm. <clears throat> at the moment anyway so yeah, I'll, I'll always have a lecture on in the morning just to get my head straight. Oh, and then yeah, <clears throat> if I'm listening to podcasts, it tends to be more on the drive home, oh. you know. So like I just want to sort of chill out or have something a bit casual, listen to something a bit more conversational. Mm. And that's when I'm listening to um, mm. to a podcast. So yeah, yeah that's, laid back that, kind of one. that's the way I do it. And you know, in the morning, it might not just be lectures, it could be Quran as well. It depends. Like mm. if I had a very yeah. like stressful week, I will probably most likely, mm. more likely to put Quran on. Um, mm, okay. okay but yeah that's just just the way i do well, things 30 minutes commute is is decent to be honest that's a good time like i personally like that's i would like i think the optimal commute is 20 minutes yeah 20 minutes yeah. there 20 minutes back because it's it's actually good to have a commute if it's that long yeah because yeah. you get time alone you get time maybe to listen to something you get time maybe to just drive in silence and think yeah um, but then longer than that, it's like you feel like you're wasting a whole day, right? So yeah. I think thirty minutes is good, bro. It's, it's, I like, I, I, I'll be honest; like, um, <laughs> it is something I, I do treasure that time. Strangely enough, I don't like being alone, like at home or being alone with nothing to do, mm-hmm. with no purpose. I hate it. I really don't like it. Mm. But being alone, sort of on the way to do something or on the way to, you know, like with a purpose. Mm. I do like that time. So, like, you know, I could go if I'm something as simple as like, oh, I need to go to the shop, right? I need to go to Asda or I need to go to some yeah. supermarket that's a little bit far away. Mm. Um, 
that commute, not commute, but that journey there yeah. is, um, I say commute because I used to work in Asda. So <laughs> that journey <laughs> there, um, it's quite nice. I, I, it's strange because, you know, I'm not saying I don't enjoy being well with my family, but it's very, uh, it, sometimes it's nice to have just like 10 minutes to just think. <laughs> to just no, it's very important. Uh, you know, um, and you don't really get that a lot when you, um, yeah. When you have these Especially when you have kids. And yeah, stuff. exactly. But it's, it's probably essential, bro, because how else are you going to learn about yourself, reflect on your on your experiences? Like everybody's going through life having experiences, but if you yeah. don't reflect on them, you almost don't benefit from them whatsoever. So okay. it's really, really important. And, you know, it's it's known, it's like a stereotype or a cliche that a man needs to go to his cave. Um, that's true, like you need to reflect and the Prophet Sallam literally went to a cave yeah. Um, so yeah it's very important man to have that kind of uh, stillness that quietness that thinking time basically reflection yeah. you know it's interesting um, like I don't I don't recall um, <clears throat> I've been thinking a lot lately about when I was younger hmm. and the self reflection that I do now I don't think I ever did when I was younger hmm. like just really critically analysing my own behaviour my own personality yeah that's because habits. it's a skill I think bro yeah. I think it's something you learn to do I'm, I'm not sure if I did and I forgot or right. if I'm do you know what I mean? This is all yeah. trying, I've been trying to think. It's been bugging me lately. I don't know why I'm so fixated on it. But I, I try and think about how I used to think when I was younger. What was my priorities? What did I sort of, what did what worried me so much? Um, what took up a lot of my brain space? And mm. especially before I was practicing as well. Like I, I, I've been trying to think lately. Cause me and my wife had this conversation yesterday about how we both sort of looked at each other and we thought we would have never thought we would be who we are today. 20 not 20 years ago but you know when we were teenagers um and it's crazy because i you know i knew that we had to practice the religion but it was always in the back of my mind that oh i'll do it when i'm really old you know that kind of thing right when i'm really old that maybe i'll start praying or maybe i'll start taking the religion more seriously and this is in a time when i didn't really know much about the religion anyway um so to me being uh, religious was something that was you know for the elderly generation um so yeah and I, I thought what would what would i what would my young self see in me now like what would the conversation be between us would he be surprised would he be annoyed would he be do you know what i mean yeah <laughs> what, yeah and it was it made me think about the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know that at least for me the choice to start practicing came out of nowhere it wasn't like something happened or i had a life or death situation um and the guidance just comes out of nowhere um and then, yeah, just doing that comparison of who were you before and look at you now and mm. how, and, and not just like that, like, yes, low Adam, I may be guided now, but I might not always be, you know, and it's it's about not taking that for granted and treasuring it. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you know what, I, when I think back, I realized one day, maybe when I was 24, five-ish, I, I looked back and I realized how much I'd, Actually, no, this was when I was around 20, yeah? I looked back at my time at uni and I realized how absolutely different I was in first year compared to second year compared to third year. And it blew my mind that, wow, like my thinking, my mindset, like everything has changed so much in such a short space of time. Like literally yeah. year on year, I changed so much. And maybe now when I look back and I think about that, maybe it was something to do with the fact that I actually spent quite a lot of time alone in those years. Um, although uni often is about people and, and friends and everything, um, I had like, <clears throat> I used to drive back and forth between cities uh, you know, almost weekly. Um, I, in third year, I had like, uh, I, I had a room on my own. So I was like on my own a lot, go to the gym on my own. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I'm just in the mode where, I would go through a month or two where it's like, I don't really want to be with people. So uh, yeah. class finishes. And although I had friends in the class, I'm just gone. Like, I'm gone. I go pray. I go eat lunch. I go do my thing, like, on my own. So I did a lot of driving on my own as well. And just, I guess, perhaps, you know, I can't be sure. But that <clears throat> that time alone led to reflection, which led to growth. Hmm. You know, subhanAllah. And this was the time before podcasts. So, uh I guess I was like doing all these things without listening to any podcast, just kind of thinking. Subhanallah. Yeah. 
it's true i mean actually that's that's kind of just just pushed me further to kind of lower my input like like already i wanted to kind of have certain time where i'm not listening to anything but now i've i've kind of just had this epiphany right here on the podcast live <laughs> <laughs> live behavioral change what's going on with your um your phone usage because ever since you said you're going to use it less i feel like i'm getting you re- replying to my pod my my whatsapp messages more <laughs> really okay yeah i'm okay. finding it strange because i'm used to you i'm used to messaging you and then like maybe not hearing until the next day which is fine because yeah. i know that's yeah. you but yeah. this week i've been messaging you and you've been replying like almost every time okay. so i'm thinking mm, is he failing at his uh mission here <laughs> <laughs> okay let me see so uh Hmm. I mean, I'm sticking to my one hour maximum of WhatsApp per day. Um, and I'm generally, I'm around the, uh, it's not telling me the average, but I'm probably, my average like an hour and 45 minutes on my phone per day. Oh, wow. Um, so for me, that's like good. That's low. Like my goal is to always be below two hours um, based on, you know, what I actually need the phone for and what I don't need it for. I don't know, bro. Maybe I'm taking the podcast more seriously. That's why. Because there are people <laughs> there are people in my WhatsApp who have not been replied to <laughs> for like two weeks. <laughs> so, oh, no. so it's, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? You're special. What can I say? What yeah. can I say? There's a lot of brothers like that. Like um, <clears throat> Faisal's like that. Faisal Chowdhury, host of mm. Freshly Grounded Podcast. He's a bit like that, mm. where he won't reply or he won't. He doesn't like using his phone past a certain time at night right um, yeah recently he messaged me at night and he was so apologetic mm. he was like listen i hate messaging people at night i hate having conversations at night but he desperately had to tell me something and i was like okay, okay. <laughs> fair enough <laughs> but it just shows like even in that mindset if you hate it yourself you'd hate it for others you know mm. yeah yeah uh bro I, i've got quite a few more podcasts actually <clears throat> so we mentioned aim feed freshly grounded um okay there there is the hot seat uh do you know that oh one? yeah i've never listened to, i've uh, seen it floating but i've never listened yeah. to any of their episodes okay. so that's that's uh based in dubai so the stad abrahman hassan you may know him from he's got a you know pretty big youtube channel and uh he he used to be based in london he's somali yep. and uh he I was going to say he's graduate from Medina, but I'm not sure because he's actually studied in so many places. He initially studied in Somalia, but I know he's studied in, in many different countries, mashallah. And um, uh, he's somebody, you know, I've I've studied with and I've met quite a few times. And uh, this podcast is kind of, so it's him and the host. And basically the host's job is to grill him. So they will pick a topic where maybe among Muslims, there is some differences, you know, some people have uh, different views and they'll kind of, uh, Ustad Abdurrahman will kind of just present his argument and try and justify it with evidence and stuff. And then the the host like tries to grill him and tries to like uh, play devil's advocate, basically. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So it's really good. And I, I met Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I met the host of it on Hajj. Imagine oh, right. I, I was in Mina and I just saw his face once and I was like, is that him? Is it not him? Yeah. Then the second time I saw him, I was like, Salaam alaikum, do you live in Dubai? He's like, yeah. And then he's like, oh, you have a podcast. I was like, you have a podcast. <laughs> 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 yeah. So uh, that's Shahid from, from the podcast, from the hot seat. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a good one, bro. It's a good one. I told him, I gave him feedback. I was like, look, it's sick. I love the concept. Like, um, if you really believe in your ideas, you should be able to justify them, you know, with, you know, proof, evidence, everything. Yeah. yeah. So, so, it's, so why not be proactive and actually have someone grill you? If you're that confident that you're right, then let somebody grill you, you know? Mm, so, definitely. so I really like that. I told him that he should, uh, some other feedback I gave him was like, you try and grill the stead on things that someone who disagrees with him wouldn't even grill him on you know like uh to give an exaggerated example like uh he says you know the definition of this and this is xyz and then he's like oh but i could say that that's not the definition it's like come on it's just the definition like let's get to the actual argument here yeah um so it, it was a bit contrived uh, sometimes, but most of the time, bro, it's really good. Uh, I just listened to the episode on reason versus revelation. 
even though it doesn't really oppose each other. Um, and yeah, I enjoy it, bro. I enjoy it. Uh, so that's that's that one. And then kind of on perhaps on the opposite scale of things, maybe the podcasts I enjoy the most in from Muslims, yani, which may be t- covering more Islamic topics, uh, is the Safina Society podcast. Now, this this podcast is perhaps my favorite. It's bro. The, the guys on this podcast just bring such original ideas that you've never thought of before. At least I haven't thought of before. And that's why I really enjoy it. They're fully, they're, they're all Quran, Sunnah, everything. Um, the thing is, though, they're coming from more of a Sufi angle. Yeah, because they're Sufis, they're open about it. They say we're Ash'ari, we say they're this and that. And I don't agree with them on those things. I've got to make that clear. But I just I just love the, because 95% of what they're talking about is not rulings and it's not Aqeedah, it's not this stuff. It's just general life stuff that any Muslim, uh, you know, kind of touches upon in their life. Uh, dealing with people, dealing with family, how things were in the past, like societal norms, and then today how they are. Right. So, I, bro, really, really enjoy this podcast, and I, I appreciate that they're like straight. They're like, look, we're Ashari. Like, I, I, I don't like the whole hiding thing. Like, just say who you are, and then we can be aware of that stuff, you know. Uh, and and they don't speak about these kind of differences per se, anyway. So. It's pretty cool. So I enjoy that one as well. With uh, They're from the US. Um, okay. Dr. Shadi Al-Masri, he's like the kind of sheikh they have there on the podcast. And finally, I mean, I guess the only other main one is the Mad Mamluks. And for me, this is like, uh, I listen to some, have you ever listened to it? Like it's probably the number one Muslim podcast, um, to be honest. I've seen it since the early days of, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've never, I don't think I've ever listened to them. Mm. I don't know if I've, forgive me if I'm wrong with this, but I, I've got the vibe that it was quite liberal years ago, but I don't mm. know if it is. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Like they're That's very, fine. maybe I got it completely yeah, wrong. Yeah. I, you know what they do though is their mindset is we have so many different people in the Ummah, yeah, and this is a platform for most of the, yeah, the people that come within basically. Sunni Islam, you know, people who, okay. uh, you know, their paradigm is looking at life through Islam and it's looking at life through Quran and Sunnah, yeah. And there are many different, obviously, flavors of that, yeah, that come out from, you know, how humans are, you know. And what yeah. they what they believe is that everyone should be able to come and just explain themselves, yeah. yeah. And but but what I appreciate about these guys is they're obviously more orthodox, maybe what or I would just call normal Muslims, you know. And so sometimes they'll be very frank and they'll oppose the person that they've invited, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, they're not, like, super knowledgeable in order to, like, come on that level, but they will question them and they will push them. And you get a feeling that, basically, when they don't agree, you know that they don't agree, you know. Yeah. So to, get, to give an example, they just brought Yasser Qadi on and... Um, and uh, he, you know, some controversy happened recently and they were kind of pushing on him. They're like, yeah, but what if people said this about what you said? And what if people understood it that way? And don't you yeah. think this? So that's basically what they believe in. It's like uh, they bring people on, even if they disagree, even if they agree. And just kind of sometimes it's very it's not confrontational whatsoever. It's just like, OK, tell us what happened here. Tell us what happened there. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, OK, but what if people argued this and what if someone said that? So that's the whole thing. It's like bring all the spectrums of people and then let them kind of justify themselves. And uh, for example, they they did one episode where, where they were just grilling feminism. OK, and yeah. then they got they got pushed back from certain like Muslim feminist, uh, you know, figures. And then they said, OK, we'll come on the podcast and, and argue your points. Argue your point. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's their kind of vibe. I think they, they pretty much get the most downloads out of all these Islamic podcasts. Yeah. Um, and they always have guests on. And um, yeah, I, I probably listen to a, maybe a, maybe 20% of the episodes because it just based, depends on the topic and the person they've mm. they've uh, brought on, really. Um, so yeah. We've got, um, we've got, <laughs> I brought up a bit of a controversy when I was on the Freshly Grounded podcast. You might remember at the end mm. where I started asking about him bringing on female guests. Yes. Oh, is that kind of controversial? Yeah. Well, I think for him, not for him, but there are people that want to make a controversy out of it when there doesn't need right. to be mm. But on that note, mm. he said that he wants that, that gap to be filled, and I said that it's already being filled. Um, and leading from that, I've just messaged my wife, because I know my wife um, listens to a lot of podcasts, uh, 
I say a lot, but a few podcasts that are female only, so you know, women talking about women's issues mostly and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Really, really good ones. Like that, she she doesn't stop raving about them. Like she really loves them, and I just wanted to recommend those. Okay. Um, because she'll tell me some. I don't listen to them myself, but she tells me about stuff they've spoken about, and it's, it sounds really good. Um, one of them is from someone called Fatima Barakatullah. Yeah, I think she's associated with the Ilm Feed. Yeah, podcast. she's the female host of that. Okay, so there's that one. So she has her own one. I don't. Uh, let me see. I don't know. I think if you just just search her on YouTube, it might come up. Okay. Um, second one. Oh, actually, that might be it. Mindful Mus- Muslima. Okay. Uh, I think that's what it might be called. Um, then the one that she talks about a lot is Honest Tea Talks. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I'm aware of that, bro. Do they have a podcast or is it all on YouTube? I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. Um, but for the, anyone listening and wants to, you know, sort of check them out, then I'd say first of all search on YouTube, and then mm. if you do want them on podcast apps, then just do another search on the podcast app. Yeah. And then um, that might. I be I, I, I listened to a couple of those um, honest tea talks. They, you know, I I think it's very good, bro. Um, I, obviously, I couldn't agree with all the things I said, but man, uh, what I like is. It's it's substance and it's like um, more basically, bro. They're mature, you know. Yeah. They're not like twenty summit year olds coming on like us. Yeah. <laughs> they're like yeah. more uh, mature, mature women who've had kids. And I think, especially for women, that the time maybe where they mature a lot, they grow a lot, is when they they're basically raising their kids. And then when their kids reach that age, like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, six, it's like. They've gone through so much and they've, they've developed so much and they've just become really mature and they probably uh, they probably reflect a lot on human behavior by raising kids, you know. Um, so that's what I think is good about their podcast. It's like mature wisdom kind of thing. Oh, Echi Tweet is uh, buffering. Oh, he sent me a WhatsApp message. I think my son just booted the router. <laughs> Subhanallah. Okay, so hopefully he'll be back sometime soon. Lol. Okay, let's see if there's anything I can uh, cover in terms of podcasts while Muhammad's away. <clears throat> so, um, uh, I've got our boys in the cave here. I've subscribed to it, but really and truly I haven't listened to too many of those um obviously those guys are based in uh, australia they've had some interesting ones interesting uh episodes topics etc um but i can't really say much about it because i haven't listened too much um and then i already mentioned ibn abi omar podcast it doesn't seem too too um also word consistent but you might be interested in some of these uh, topics that are covered. I know that uh, the brother Omar Uthman, he's done work with uh, Muhammad Faris from Productive Muslim as well. So that's really interesting. Uh, okay, so Akhi Tweet is saying he unplugged the router in the living room. So he's lost internet. Uh, but he'll be back soon, inshallah. Um, what else have we got? Uh, there is Discover You podcast, actually. Uh, Discover You is an organization founded by um, Mohammed Sharif, you know, the founder of Al-Maghrib. So Discover You is um, his organization, and there's a podcast. He doesn't host it, but uh, it's kind of uh, interviews with uh, certain Muslims. Uh, they did an in- interview with, uh, for example, Chris from Launch Good, the founder of Launch Good. Um, I haven't listened to that one, but I know I know him myself. He's a very, very good brother, mashallah. And, of course, I might as well give a shout-out. I know it's not a podcast yet, but if you search um, on YouTube or something, Muslim CEO, then you should find our um, YouTube channel uh, where we uh, we are doing some interviews. Uh, we've, we've interviewed, uh, for example, the founder of Penny Appeal, one of the biggest charities in the UK, um, Chris from Launch Good, Hamza Zortzis from Ayera, and um, what was the other brother? Uh, Zahir from, from Learning Roots. Very good uh, Muslim, like kids, educational books kind of company. Um, so a really, really good brother, actually, Zahir. I know him personally and stuff. So that's not a podcast yet, but we're, we're going to basically turn those into audios and put them uh, as a podcast soon, inshallah. So just uh, stay locked for that. Um, 
I'm hoping Echi Tweet will come back soon, but I should be able to, surely I should be able to do a podcast on my own. <laughs> so I just wasn't prepared for it, I suppose. What I was going to discuss with Echi Tweet, and maybe it's a bit late now, but um, it was about Arabic, you know. It was about learning Arabic, speaking Arabic, because I just uh, was working with a, with a client who had a project that they want to push forward. And they kind of, okay, Echi Tweet's calling me. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. No, not not hearing you. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I had a client and they've got this project and it's pretty amazing. So what it is, it's a curriculum for people to learn, understand the Quran, understand most of the Quran through a very streamlined, accelerated learning curriculum. And this curriculum has de been developed over 20, 30 years uh, by uh, somebody, I think, in India, okay? And it's kind of been polished and polished to, to perfection, to the level where uh, if you take level one, they have levels one to five so far. If you take just level one, which is 20 hours of, uh, you know, instruction, which they do over two weekends. So it's like Saturday, five hours, Sunday, five hours, and then do that another t another weekend. After that, you should understand all the into all the words in Fatiha uh, and in your Salah in general. So that's really, uh, really impressive, man. And by, by the end of level five, you should understand half of Baqarah uh, as well, right? Uh, basically, not half of Baqarah, you should understand 90% of the words in the Quran, actually. But um, specifically, you would have gone through half of Baqarah. And by going through half of Baqarah, understanding the... Um, understanding the words you you understand the rest of the quran basically let me just play with my audio maybe because akhi tweet is on the line but i'm not hearing him so let me just do this see if i line on. oh okay now i can hear you I, I just plugged my earphones into the actual microphone instead of the computer Oh man, okay. You should have kept it running, man. There we go. Okay, I've just kept going. Um, yeah, bro, I thought while you were away, I had to kind of freestyle and, and, and so I went on to the whole topic of Arabic since that was just what I kind of had in mind. Um, so did you hear what I was saying about the Quran project? No, I um, I lost signal completely because I'm sure I mean said that my son... Yeah decided to unplug my router so yeah 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 so so bro i was talking about um, arabic like learning arabic and uh, understanding the quran and all of that stuff you know it's something that it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like dieting or getting fit it's like everybody wants to do it but nobody tends to like put in the work to do it right uh -huh. um something pretty challenging i suppose i mean i've i've i learned uh, french to a pretty much fluent level um, from scratch you know maybe people think oh you're Algerian of course you know French no I mean that's not true like I never grew up with French in my house my dad speaks French fluently but he never once spoke it to me really um, and so I just learned French in school like anyone else would and so I've gone through that journey of learning a language from scratch and then even with Arabic I didn't really I, I could like read Arabic um, I understood a few words, but I didn't really start learning it properly until I was probably 11 years old. So, you know, had a disadvantage at that time. So, yeah, bro, it's difficult. Um, but what I was saying, bro, I was I was working with a client. You're with me, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just make sure right. your son hasn't thrown a... a, a taken your phone Can you and imagine? smashed the TV with it and then <laughs> thrown it on the router and smashed that. Um Yes, so I was working with a client, uh, I think it's a couple of weeks ago now, and they have a project where they've got this uh, curriculum to understand the words of the Qur'an and, and some of the grammar of the Qur'an as well um, in a very accelerated learning program, okay? And this curriculum has been developed by somebody in India over the last 20, 30 years. And now it's like been polished, polished, polished so much. It's been taught to maybe maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. Um, 
and so I just I just uh, learn about it now basically yeah and basically uh, there's levels there's levels one to five so far and at the end of level one which is 20 hours of instruction so they so far the way they do it is over two weekends you do five hours a day for two weekends um, you should come out of that understanding and actually retaining and remembering um, everything that you say in your salah, you know, including fatiha. And it's not just like memorizing the meaning. It's like you know what each individual word means and therefore you can apply it in other parts of the Quran, you know. So, for example, if you learn... Um, uh, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen So you know Rabb now So Rabb every time it comes in the Quran You know what Rabb means Alameen You know what Alameen means You know uh, so, it's, so it's like that It's like a word by word basis So you can apply it to the rest of the Quran um, And uh, by the end of level 5 uh, You would have actually covered Fatiha Through half of Baqarah uh, And that means all the words there Which means a uh, what they say is by covering all of that and all the vocab and some of the grammar rules in that you would have um and you would be able to understand 90 percent of the words in the quran right so you should be able to at that level and remember this is only 80 hours of instruction each level is 20 hours you know so it's extremely accelerated but they say it's very um it, people retain it basically people actually learn it um so I was really I was really impressed because I've come across learning accelerated learning kind of methods before and uh, I am a trained teacher as well so um, I was really impressed because they're really using uh, very cutting edge strategies to teach people you know language and it seems to work um, although they've only taught level one and two in the UK so far um, yeah, but I, I was really impressed man and I hope these kind of things can get pushed out I mean I was working with the project to kind of help them develop a way to push it out and get it further out in the UK. So inshallah, they're kind of going to work on that and eventually it will come to a city near you. Inshallah, why not? It's what about yourself, really, bro? Isn't it? Tell me about your what? Arabic learning journey or, or languages in general. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I remember I studied traditional languages in, in school, so like French and German. Um Mm. The school I went, the sort of um, high school I went to, or secondary school I went to, was meant to be a specialist language school as well. Mm. Um, but bro, I hardly remember anything from there. Yeah, <laughs> I really don't remember much. Um, my dad always wanted me to learn French because, like you said, we're North African, and that's something that's quite treasured. Um, I did always study it, like at an academic level in terms of school, but I didn't. Nothing that I can really hold on to and say that I can carry on you know in mm. uh, in conversation and stuff but I think it probably has given me an advantage so if I was to study again properly you know and learn it for the actual real life application then mm. I would probably do a lot better than my peers mm. um, as far as Arabic is concerned uh, I spent those two years or so in Tunisia when I was little so did mm. like year one, year two and that mm. really taught me my foundations. Uh, mm. Came to the UK, and I was enrolled into different sort of after-school Arabic clubs or weekend Arabic clubs and stuff like that. Um, mm. And then I was tutored at one point uh, by one of the teachers to just do extra sort of Arabic and yeah. um, things like that. As far as Quran, though, I'm not too sure. I can't remember if I specifically learned Quran anywhere definitely didn't learn Tejweed anywhere still haven't really got to that point yet mm. which is actually quite surprising to a lot of people because when mm. I when I sit with people who have you know regular Tejweed lessons and stuff like that um, that stuff just isn't really available down here I mean there are things in the masjid now uh, mm. predominantly I mean there's there's like madrasa now in the masjid for kids um, okay. And I think they do adult lessons on Thursdays, but I could just never find the time to go. I'm either at work or I've got other sort of things. Um, I've just recently, I recently sort of made a deal with a brother around here to sort of go and meet up and he can teach me. Um, okay. But he's moving to London now, so it seems like oh. anyone who knows what's good for them leaves Brighton. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, and, bro, you know, like. But yeah, as far up, as like though. my ability to read and that, like yeah. after I left. Um, after I left my my last sort of Arabic club, it was like ten years or so until I mm. started practicing again or something like that. And mm. um, 
I remember being so wary of picking up the Quran because I just knew I wouldn't be able to read it. Even when I started practicing, I was like, I didn't really feel confident in even picking it up yeah. because I knew that the it's like hiding away from the responsibility. Like I knew that how bad yeah. I was going to be or my mm. inability to read was really going to put me off. But yeah. bro, I remember one day I just picked it up and I, I was so pleasantly surprised at how much I knew. To the mm. point now, like maybe my Tejweed isn't amazing, but I can read the whole, you know, I can read fine. You know, I can mm-hmm. read the Quran fine. I can read Arabic perfectly fine. Um, yeah. You know, if, if I was in a Muslim country, he told me to read a piece of paper, I'll do it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say? Um, but yeah, so, uh, so Alhamdulillah, it just shows you there's a lot of stuff that we pick up when we're young, even if we're not acting upon it on a day to day. I think yeah, this is yeah. why it's so vital to have that exposure. Mm-hmm. Like now mm-hmm. with my boy, just exposing mm-hmm. him to Arabic. Um, mm-hmm. Not necessarily talking to him in Arabic, but exposing him to what, maybe books or cartoons, or or slowly, you know. Now we're slowly trying to teach him letters and things like that. I mean, he is, mm. he's only two, but it's all about yeah. exposure early on. I think, mm. uh, bro. Like growing up, was the emphasis on you learning Arabic? Like you said, you went to like extra classes or whatever. So I guess your parents were pushing you towards that. Or? Yeah. So um, yeah, my my parents wanted me to learn Arabic and French uh, mm. French more so than my father but I can see exactly why he'd want that because Tunisia's second language is French and that makes complete sense um, mm. his belief was that you should always be completely embedded in that in that place to do it like I remember he really pushed for me to go and live in France for a bit um, wow. obviously I was very anti and didn't want to do that at all <laughs> but yeah. that's how he learned you know he embedded himself in that society so mm. you know he's lived in France he lived in I think it was either Sweden or Switzerland one of the two you know like that that era that generation of people leaving their home countries to find work out in Europe like he just went through some wild adventures bro Um, that's how we picked it all up I guess Um, but you know like in that is it like that in, in Tunisia or is it just your dad because in Algeria the feeling I get is that okay everyone learns French in school yeah um but it's like if you ask the parents what do they want their kids to know, they'll be like Arabic. Like they'll be like, yeah, French is like assumed, whatever. But it's like, yeah, Arabic is important. Is it like that in Tunisia? Uh, I think Arabic's a given because it's standard that everyone yeah. Would know but Arabic. like fusha, bro. Like oh, prop, like I be good know. at fusha. I I've never really had that discussion because I assumed everybody knew fusha. You mm. know, that was my mm. assumption. The only reason mm. I think French a lot is because. Um, people like a lot of obviously government stuff documents everything is french 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 uh, oh really okay yeah really yeah okay but then again I, I could be wrong because yeah there are i think for to be fair i think most documents come in too they'll like, they'll come in arabic and then there'll be a french copy. yes 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 in algeria recently i think there's talk of replacing french with english like as the second language to learn at school really? uh, because that's just the way the world has gone like French is just less relevant I've heard that too in Tunisia now I think and in Morocco Mm. actually as well in Morocco I think they they learn English as a second language now Um, yeah I've got some cousins out there that are learning they're quite fortunate that my auntie's my auntie grew up in the UK before she decided to live in Morocco for good so Mm. her daughters my cousins were born in Morocco and lived their entire lives in Morocco so yeah. in school they're being taught English as a second language, but they've got the benefit mm. of my auntie being fluent in English, obviously because she mm. lived here. Yeah, and there's there's people now in Tunisia and Morocco and Algeria, whatever, many many countries actually where they just learn English from the internet, mm. and I think it's it's actually more common than we think. Uh, for example, my friend who he's hired a developer in Morocco, and like, how does he work with that guy? It's because the guy knows English, even though he's never left Morocco. Yeah. It's just from watching films or, uh, yeah, probably most of the time it's from watching films. You're and right. Stuff. They, they really pick You're it right. up. You're um, right. My uncle recently got married and he lives, he's Moroccan, he lives here. Um, mm. But he got married to a, a lady from from Morocco. Um, mm. And he was, you know, he, when obviously I, I didn't know her, so he would say to me, oh, yeah, don't worry, she speaks really good English and blah, blah, blah. And I met mm. her. She, He's brought her over to the UK for about six months or so. Mm. And I met her, and she's just fluent. She's got an American accent. <laughs> she's <laughs> fluent, bro. Yeah. And she, you know, he told me it's all from watching movies, watching TV shows, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously learning at school. But the accent, I think, definitely comes from that kind of um, 
sort of watching that sort of media, you know? Yeah, yeah, because they always end up having the American accent. Yeah. It's like when I was doing uh, uh, study in the UK, uh, these women in my class, two Iranian women, they spoke English very, very well with American accents. And then someone asked them, oh, what, how do you learn? You know, like literally you just came straight from Iran. How do you learn it? They're like uh, friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Crazy. Um, but, you know, so you, bro, this is what I want to get straight with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do you feel like you can say absolutely anything you want, at least in Derja, like in Tunisian Arabic? Um not always no it depends how embedded i am so like when i'm out when i've been out of it for a while yeah it can take me a while to get specific words mm, that um, does happen yeah. and then also i've got the i think for me the biggest struggle is the the mix up of words so it depends who i'm talking to so i can i can ultimately say what i, I know what i'm saying in my head but it's yeah. not always translated because you know algeria algerian dialect will have a different thing than moroccan and moroccan will say different to tunisian mm. Tunisian. so there's always different words there and i can't always remember which word is for what dialect okay okay yeah, that's, yeah. that's my, but, struggle. That's my yeah. struggle that's my struggle because i am very mixed yeah. if i wasn't mm. if i was purely mm. you know tunisian or something yeah. then i think i'd be fine <clears throat> but mm. when i'm embedded in those cultures then i tend to do better like yeah after a month yeah. in tunisia i'm fine yeah. Yes. Even it's like that. me. I haven't been to Algeria for two or three years. And so it's like I sometimes speak Arabic with my wife, with my husband, uh, with my wife, with my dad. <laughs> but um, it's not like flowing conversation. Mm. And therefore, I feel rusty. Yeah. But within a week or so of going to Algeria, I'll be full in flow. And there was a time one summer I was in Algeria for like two months. And the thing about Algeria that I always tell people the reason I learn Arabic so quickly and easily is number one, I was in, I was embedded, like you said, yeah. Um, what do they call that? Immersion, yeah. Um, that was number one. Number two is I often went there just with my siblings, so mm. my parents weren't there, and sometimes I would even be split up from my siblings. So I would just go with my cousins this place on my own, like without my brother for example. So there's no one to speak English to. So it's like sink or swim, basically. Mm. Um, and this is how I learned so quickly. And within uh, the first summer I went, you know, it, it was a very kind of slow start. By the end of it, I stayed a month there. By the end of it, I was I was pretty good. Um, but at, by the end of the second summer, I would say, so that's two months of total time there, uh, complete immersion, I was like pretty much fluent, you know. And since then, I, I've just polished it a little bit each time I go back. But also, you know, since I've, I reached the age of maybe 20, 21, I've also been more engaged in other Arabic stuff, like non-Algerian, you know. So it's like listening to lectures in Arabic and stuff like that. And that allowed me to now learn just Arabic rather than just specifically Algerian, you know, uh, dialect. It's like general words and, and stuff like that, you know. So the immersion thing was was number one for me definitely bro definitely as far as fusha is concerned i feel like i probably learned most of my fusha from arabic cartoons i grew up okay so many cartoons <laughs> when i was in captain Majid, yeah yeah so like it even became a joke like i would just you'd only speak in fusha because it would it would be humorous because it you know if you sound like a cartoon yeah because you sound like a cartoon so oh that's funny but i think that's it's, it's a real shame actually because i think that's what sort of made me subconsciously hesitant to speak in Fusha to those who would probably understand me better if I did so. You know? Oh, okay. So if mm. I met someone from Saudi or someone from, you know, anywhere, and I've had it, you know, had it at work, I've had it um, mainly at work, yeah. If I meet somebody from a completely different neck of the woods in terms of Arabic, um, mm. and I, I can't help but default to certain derja when speaking mm. to them, uh, it's really difficult. Yeah. And then after that conversation, and this is what always, I leave myself kicking myself because I'm thinking, oh, I could have just said that and that and that. It's like the Fusha starts coming <laughs> back to me. I said, oh, it would have been so much easier if I just said it in Fusha. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't that come to my mind? Mm. Yeah, yeah. But, it, uh, is, it is something people can find funny, like strange, not funny, but quite strange because obviously nobody goes around speaking Fusha to each other. But, um, you know, Personally, I'm really into it. I want to. I want to. I've. I've. I've not really ever studied fusha. This is the thing. Mm. So it's like I know I can do it. I know I can become good at it because I've learned French from scratch. I've learned Arabic kind of from scratch. 
um, like uh, like actual uh, Algerian mostly, yeah. Yeah. And now now I've improved my you know what some people call like uh, MSA like mon modern standard Arabic or whatever. Like <laughs> basically, I try and when I'm speaking to non North Africans, I just try and use neutral words. So it's like if I know a neutral word which is not specifically North African, I just use that. Um, I I try I kind of modify my grammar so that it suits a more general understanding and so then people understand me and to be honest it works most of the time and a lot of the time people are confused because they're like what yeah. where where the hell are you from like why are you speaking like this like this like neutral kind of uh dialect but um it's it's me trying to cater to people and, and trying to you know be understood because i think a lot of what for example north africans would do they would just go to a, another country arab country and they just speak algerian they kind of maybe either they don't know like the less educated uh algerians they don't know how to speak yeah. other arabic other than derja yeah and the the more educated ones maybe they just i don't know they kind of feel like people understand them or something but because i've lived in the uae for so long i know what people will and yeah. won't understand when it comes to my dialect so therefore i try and create this neutral dialect and then people get confused because they're like well if you're algerian yeah. why are you not speaking algerian and i'm like well because you might not understand it and they're like okay yeah, i get that and and even i i kind of changed the, even the algerian dialect because i i want to promote a culture in algeria of speaking um derja yes like fully our dialect yeah, like but without the french words so I, as long as I know the Arabic word, I will always use that over the French word, even though it, the norm might be to use that word in French. I'll always say it in Arabic. And of course, they understand it. It's just the cultural norm is that specific mm. word is mm. often said in French, not Arabic, you know. So. So, yeah, man, I, I try and uh, create this kind of neutral um, dialect. Um, and it, the thing is, you know, people often ask me like, oh, like what? all you Arabs like you have all these different dialects and like which one do I learn and like if I learn one will will someone else not understand me like another from another country and I'm like look yeah just learn Fusha learn Fusha and yes people will find it weird when you talk to them in Fusha but um what will happen is you'll have a very strong base to then go and learn the the differences with all these different dialects like it, it's the launch pad and you, it's like 80 percent of stuff to then go and learn these other dialects and then before you know it you'll be you'll be able to modify your accent so you'll be able to speak egyptian with an egyptian you'll be able to speak you know uh algerian with algerian whatever you know yeah do you think Fosha is more accepted in certain countries as like i i have this assumption that in saudi it'd be more accepted because there's so many different you know students of knowledge that are going there that don't know arabic especially like mm. Mecca and Medina, like I feel like it'd be way more accepted or understood as opposed to, mm. I don't know, Tunisia or Morocco or wherever. Like if you were to go up to someone selling, you know, fruit and veg and start speaking to them at first yeah. time, they might just start laughing at you. Yes, yes. Um, probably. I can't, I, don't, I can't speak for Saudi, you know, I, I have not really spent enough time there. But it's true, you know, like Mecca and Medina, because they're such international cities where people are there from all over the world. Hmm. It's like, for example, in Mecca, in the area our hotel was in during Hajj, there were so many uh, people from West Africa. OK, yeah. now these West Africans, they might know some Arabic fusha from what they've learned in school or in the madrasa or whatever in their country. Yeah. So they, if they're going to speak Arabic, they might speak fusha. And then I think the general the general vibe becomes yeah fusha is our common language perhaps yeah well our alam that's just kind of a guess i think it, fusha is a strange thing to use in most countries maybe it would be less so in but the thing is it's all it's, it's not normal to use it day to day but it's respected in most countries it's like okay this guy knows real arabic like this guy's sick because they acknowledge how uh, difficult it can be and how um, sophisticated the language is it's not like i think this is what maybe english speakers don't understand arabic fusha arabic it's not like english english you either speak it or you don't mm. right but arabic it's like there's a difference between general being able to speak arabic and being like good arabic so so uh, you often hear uh, you speaking to to an arab about someone let's say a journalist yeah and they'll be like oh yeah his arabic is really good 
You don't say that in English, do you? It's like, of course, everyone who's a native speaker, their English is good, you know. But in Arabic, there's there's a, a level above where people are like, oh, yeah, his Arabic is very good. He knows how to speak it really properly. Mm. And that's probably because it's a richer and it's a more sophisticated language. Or Allah Yeah, yeah. But you see with Fusha, this is the thing. You, you When I suggested this topic, you were like... Um, you know, you're going to make me feel guilty or whatever. <laughs> like, why do you hold that guilt? Like, I'll explain why I feel it, but why do you feel that way? Um, and what do you feel guilty for exactly? I think it's not necessarily Arabic. It's just my Tajweed is really bad. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's more Tajweed, not Arabic. Yeah, because I think I think the Tajweed element is my more fundamental requirement right now, as opposed yeah, to for Arabic sure, in yeah. general. Or well, the Arabic mm. would be nice because it would open up doors for me in terms of all right. sorts of knowledge to mm. be able mm. to be so achieved. You, you see, with with have you ever studied Fusha? Uh, yeah, I guess so. So yeah, in, in terms of the those sort of after school things I was doing, yeah, mm. that would be my. But not not mm. at a proper academic level, no. Mm. What about in school in Tunisia? Surely you did. I must Fusha. have done, but it must have been so basic. I mm. can't even. Remember. A long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, for example, you know, if you pick up tafsir in book in Arabic, would you understand that? So I've tried to, but there's a lot of words I wouldn't. I could read. Obviously, mm. I could read it fine, but there's a lot yeah, of stuff yeah. that I wouldn't. Like this is the thing. Like so, it's, it's like the a book issue, bro. It's the same with the Quran in a, in a similar sense. Like I could read obviously a whole surah, mm. perfectly fine, but it wasn't mm. until I actually start really thinking word for word what each and everything means. I'm like, I have no idea what this sentence says. Do you know mm, what I mean? Okay. Like, if I really think about it, like, you'll get a vibe, but because mm. it's it's very strange. It's very strange to be able to read um, something completely yeah. fine, like, phonetically perfect, yeah. but not actually understand what you've just read. Mm. <laughs> it's very yeah, strange. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you're saying you you have big vocab gaps when it comes to reading because obviously with quran often you're not focused on what it means you're focused on saying it correctly exactly reading it yeah. correctly right but but that's why i said tafsir because tafsir is not quran you're just reading yeah. someone you know a man's words so that's what i'm saying you can read it obviously fine but you don't understand a lot because of vocab gaps is that i'm what assuming you're so yeah because but to be fair i don't think i've ever I haven't really given tafsir a chance in Arabic. Mm, um, okay. You know, a lot of my tafsir, because I default to English anyway, I feel like I'm going to understand right. more in English. So Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because last maybe three, six months, I've, I've tried to read some tafsir in Arabic. Because, to be honest, it's the best. And the, you find all the all the best ones in Arabic. But whereas English is like some you find and some you don't. Um, and yes, I found that I, I read it, I understand the structure of the sentence grammatically, right? So I've got my grammar base there, but then it's just some vocab gaps. And sometimes it's like in, in a 10 word sentence, not understanding one word means you don't understand the whole sentence. Mm. So that that's where I find I need the most of the work is in the vocab, you know? Um, but you know, bro, with... Uh, the the, the I, I, I always you know speak to my wife about this, like I feel a lot of shame actually around the Arabic language and that's because I I didn't grow up knowing Arabic that well I just l started learning it when I was 11 12 etc and it's like I'm very much uh, identify as Arab and yet I don't speak Arabic like that that well you know I speak Derja okay but sometimes I, I'm, I'm lacking words in Derja even and I want to be able to say the Arabic word the proper Fusha word if possible and so I just feel, I, I constantly feel the shame around that. And that's why um, I might even avoid going to certain, like let's say in the UAE, you go to a government office to get something done. Um, they're going to be all Emiratis working there. And so obviously they, they'll know enough English to help you out. But it's like, I want to go, I'm Arab. Like I should be able to go and speak to them in Arabic. Yes. But then it's like, if I go, I might lack that one word that I need. And then it's like, they'll just be looking at me weird like okay this guy speaks arabic but then he doesn't speak arabic like what's going on yeah and so i realize i i really hold a lot of shame around this topic of, of knowing arabic and that's why for me it's like one of the biggest battles i feel i have and, and i feel like once my arabic is great i will i'll just uh, i know it's almost like i'll be complete i won't have any area of my life where i'm lacking confidence that's mm. what i 
that's what I feel like, you know. So I know I need to really um, put emphasis on this. And uh, I think one way I, I definitely want to do that is make sure I'm speaking to my wife in Arabic um, always, you know, because um, my wife speaks very good Fusha. And um, I think I should read more as well. I should read more in Arabic. That will help me. Mm, I think for me, I should probably, I think what might help is watching more Arabic lectures. Um, yeah. I think. And bro, the, there are some there are some lectures or some speakers that use very neutral, easy to understand Arabic. Like, yeah. Yeah, like you know, there's fusha, which sometimes fusha is difficult, but then there's like a more toned down version of fusha. If you know what I mean? Yeah. And and those ones are really good. You know, like uh, let me try and give example. I always give the example of khawatir, which is it's not a lecture, but it's a TV show. It's got an Islamic um, feeling to it. And the Arabic used is okay. Saha, it's Saudi Arabic, but it's not too too much far off Fusha. Yeah, and and it's easy to understand. So, and it's very entertaining and beneficial, in fact. So that's a good one. When it comes to lectures, um, I don't know, bro. I don't actually follow speakers. I just follow by topic. Like, yeah, I was, I, I went through this uh, series um, uh, covering this book on Usul al Fiqh. And um, like, what's usul al fiqh? Principles of deriving uh, rulings, basically. Yeah. And um, bro, I don't, I forgot even the guy's name, but it's just a friend that I really trust. He recommended this series. And yeah. so I'm going through it, you know. And it's in Arabic. And, you know, it's true, actually. I find Saudi's Arabic quite easy to understand, definitely. Yeah. It's more neutral than Egyptians, for example. I think they can switch it on and off because when I do speak to some. Saudi brothers, especially the students from here, uh, mm. I just get thrown off completely. But then okay, when I listen really. to them on TV, mm. I feel like I can I can figure it out quite easily. Mm. I think that might that might perhaps come down to the level of Arabic. It's like these shiuch, that level of Arabic is very high, yeah. and so they can kind of play with it the way they like. They could go full advanced. They could tone it down. They could speak like in a way where absolutely everyone in the society will understand them. Yeah. So they play with it. Like sometimes, for example. Uh, Sheikh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Abu Hassan, is that his name? Al Huwaini, the muhaddith, the very famous muhaddith from from uh, Egypt. Sometimes he'll be on the Fusha vibe, and then sometimes he'll be speaking like a, an Egyptian, like farmer, you know, yeah. like just to tone it down for everyone to understand. Like it depends on the context yeah. that they're speaking in. Um, but what about Tajweed, bro? Because I'm probably like you, like I was really that was an area i was lacking confidence in i'm like look how can i be quote unquote practicing i'm very yani i'm trying to be dedicated to islam i'm trying to be committed i'm trying to avoid haram and i'm trying to gain knowledge even and am i like let's say i go to a seminar and then the the teacher asks somebody to read the ayah and i'm not putting my hand up because i'm i, I know i'm gonna flop yeah, yeah same um but what happened maybe four or five years ago one ramadan i had quite a bit of free time in that ramadan and my friend who had studied with a with a real teacher he just came he was my neighbor actually at the time he just came he just taught me all the rules all the fard rules that you need to know and in one ramadan we finished everything like all the basics like the you know the a absolute uh, minimum that a muslim should have you know a minimum that a muslim needs to be able to read quran with correct tajweed we covered all those rules and since then, alhamdulillah, now I've, I've got past that kind of uh, lacking confidence. Now I feel I can read um, correctly. I, I know what's right and wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe, like you said, uh, you have that friend who could uh, teach you. Yeah. So he's gone now, right? I think that's what right? I need to but, do. I need to find someone. Yeah. Um, even, like, even when I go up to London, bro, I'm sure one of the brothers that I've got, I'm sure, like, when I see them, I could just see them an hour earlier um, before, you know, yes. everyone else comes down sit down and go work through uh, yeah. certain things and just record I think what I'll try and do is record the sort of sitting so that I can you know when I do leave I can go over what we've learned together again yeah man yeah it's man. all about doing um, it isn't it it's just about putting them in the work making some effort yeah. and then it's like, put baraka in your time yeah and if you're serious uh, th that's uh, oh yeah it was, it was not on the podcast in a video I said show me your I, I obviously i didn't make this up but show me your bank statement and show me where your time goes and i'll tell you your priorities in it yeah so you just gotta 
you just got to put the time into it and this is the thing bro alhamdulillah what i realized when i was learning tajweed is because i know arabic is is a breeze like it's actually a breeze it's alhamdulillah very easy um because my friend that was teaching me he was like he was explaining how oh, oh this 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 part for example is very difficult for non arabic speakers but obviously you understand like for example you have the rule of uh, idhar yeah mm. now I can remember until now, if you ask me what idhar is, I know what it means, why? It's not because I had to memorize and memorize and memorize what idhar is. It's because I know idhar comes from dhahara, which means that it's going to be a sound which is uh, clear. Yeah. Um, and so the, even the names of the rules, if you know Arabic, you know what the name, the, the, the rules mean. And so, you know, it's, so it's much easier. So that's why I feel like in... Uh, you know it depends how intensive you do it but yeah. in about a month in about a month you can kind of cover it and then from then on it's about reading quran regularly and just kind of stopping yourself when you notice that you're making mistakes i think my um my son's kicking off in the next room i think i'm going to bring him in to um sign out the show bro <laughs> <laughs> okay Let me grab him. by the way what what does he call you he calls me baba <laughs> baba okay Come on. Baba akhi tui. hello suso hello suso you're going to go on Mind Heist? Really? Don't touch anything. <laughs> What's he say? I don't know. He said banana peel because I had a banana. Okay. <laughs> Susu, are you going to say bye-bye? Say bye-bye, I mean. Come on. He's gone quiet now. He's very shy. How convenient. Only when we need him to speak. <laughs> Let's have a look. Can you hear? Say hello. Say hello, everybody. <laughs> That's a microphone. <laughs> oh, now you're quiet. Well, and this has been episode... 47. 47. Banana peel. Banana peel, exactly. 47 of the Mind Heist <laughs> podcast. Uh, with Akhi Tweet and Amin. And Suleiman, actually. <laughs> um, I hope yeah, he so. outgrows that nickname real quick. <laughs> Uh, alhamdulillah yeah uh, we're gonna have to i'm gonna have a field day editing this one because i just messed up that recording halfway through i'm trying to think how i'm gonna put it all together mm, you need to find the bit where um you started recording again yeah yeah maybe i should time. let you edit it this time how about that um i'm traveling in two days so <laughs> we'll I, I could i could we'll see okay then inshallah all right then um, okay uh Yes, remember everywhere you can find us. Uh, Mind Heist Podcast. Mi Mi Mind Heist Podcast at gmail .com is the email. Please give us feedback because I really appreciate knowing what we're doing good and what we could do better. Um, so please let us know about that. Mind Heist Pod on Instagram. CuriousCat.me slash Mind Heist Pod. And yeah, signing out from three the three of us actually all three of us <laughs> <laughs> okay subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa alaykum assalam